And what we're going to talk about today is something called the Libre Graphics Magazine Archive because in 2016 we ceased publication of the magazine, which I'll tell you a tiny bit more about in a moment. Uh, and two years later we decided that we wanted to actually make it live again without restarting the project. So I'm going to do something that I almost never, ever, ever do, which is read a pre-prepared presentation. Those of you who know me will know that what I normally do is just turn up and talk nonsense in front of some slides. So I'll be doing the opposite. I don't really have any exciting slides, and I have a pre-prepared thing. And then after that, I'll hand over to Anna and Ricardo, who will talk about what it was like to make the archive. But what I'm going to do now is read you something called One More Time, which is the editor's letter that accompanies the Libra Graphics Magazine archive, which we are launching imminently. So, in five years of editing Libra Graphics Magazine, I wrote eight editor's notes. They all took a broadly similar form. They introduced the theme of the issue, explained why that theme mattered, provided a brief highlight of what to expect in the issue, and tried to put a little provocation in at the end to get the reader geared up for the following pages. For the sake of tradition, this one is going to be very similar. For five years, between 2010 and 2015, we made Libra Graphics Magazine. Every issue, all eight of them, contained writing, images, ideas we found worthwhile, thought-provoking, that showed off what free Libra and open source software, design, art, and culture could do and be. We wanted to not only document what was already happening, but also to inform what might. It was important for it to be a print magazine because we were graphic designers who had been trained to love print, to love paper, to love the feel of a magazine and the ability to pick it up, flip through it, tear out a page, leave it on a coffee table, hand it to a friend. It was a magazine not just for the eyes, but for the hands. There's a romance to that and we were invested in it. Eventually, we stopped. More on that in Coming Home After an Absence, which you'll find elsewhere in the archive. But with the help of a large and ever-changing group of contributors, we left behind eight wonderful issues of a magazine that made us very proud. The aim of this archive is to, for the first time, collect everything in one place, online, in a more accessible, more linkable, more portable format, one of the things that mattered most about the magazine during its run was that it was designed to be a print publication, above all else. This archive is an answer to a question we've had since the magazine's inception. What does that print-first magazine look like when it really attends to the needs of a digital format? My two co-editors, Anna and Ricardo, have some thoughts on that in their production colophon, which also you'll find in the archive. When the three of us conceived of this archive, we also wanted it to include some new work. Because we're now a couple of years distant from the magazine's original run, we wanted to look back not just at what happened between 2010 and 2015, but to also see where things have moved since. In that spirit, in addition to the entire contents of the Libra Graphics magazine 2010 to 2015, we have a small selection of new work from people who have made valued and valuable contributions to our Libra Graphics landscape in the last eight years. We have an article from Julien Desueuf uh, about the state of the ecosystem ref uh, reflecting on our place in the broader design world. From Larissa Blazek, we have some thoughts on how young designers are currently being educated and how that education could be different. We have the usual production colophon from Anna and Ricardo, but with some extra reflection. We have a piece from the three of us reflecting on five years, our one serious bit of reminiscence. They, they don't actually know that we've written that. Uh, they need to look at it before it gets published, because mostly I've done that, but I digress. And finally, we have a series of slightly facetious questions <laughs> that a collection of interesting artists, designers, practitioners, researchers, and to quote Julien Desueuf, thinkers, have answered for us about their experiences of and hopes for floss in art and design. 
What we want with all of this is to see Libra Graphics magazine live a little more, even though its publication run has ended. And I think it does live. Archives, because they preserve the collections they contain, help those collections live. Instead of being lost, or at the very least locked away in PDFs, we're both pleased and proud that the works that made up Libra Graphics magazine in its original run between 2010 and 2015 will now get a second life. And I will now hand you over to Anne and Ricardo, who will talk about how that second life works. So now we'll be switching to a more um, practical aspect of how does uh, print magazine archive come to be. Um, so as Ginger said, uh, our magazine's main focus was print. And uh, the biggest feature request we always had over the years was, why don't you make an online version of the magazine? And that was something that we've been wanting to do, like Ginger said, from day one. But the problem is uh, we would produce first in uh, Scribus, uh, the um, Scribus interface, and that was not easily portable to, um, to the web, at least when we started in 2010. Um, and even now, when we decide, okay, let's go with this, this is what we thought would be the way to elevate the magazine to its rightful resting place, which would be online for everyone to read. Um, and we'd like to present, talk a bit about what the process is. Um, so the first thing that we settled on was uh, we have to convert the Scribus files into something uh, that's web-friendly. And why the Scribus files? In fact, we use text files a lot between us um, in production, but the last minute edits only ended up in Scribus. So we only had the Scribus documents as the true source. And how do we get stuff away from there? Um, we did, well, and uh, I apologize in advance to all the Scribus people in the room, but we actually made a small scale XML parser to extract the text from the Scribus files. Um, because this is an example of such a file. You can see there's iText uh, nodes um, halfway, and that's where the text lives, and then there's this attribute C parent, which is the style. So we made a script that is also made available in the archive repository, which we'll point to in the end, that's, um, that kind of gets all these and tries to assign, okay, this is a heading, this is, a, this is uh, italic, and so on. Um, it's really not that uh, good of a conversion script, by the way, um, <laughs> because uh, it flips the pages, and we had to do a lot of manual editing after that. Um, and, of course, there's the programmer's uh, vision of automating everything. That's usually the case, but uh, that's, in our experience, that's most often actually never the case. Um, so after all this automation, we had to do a lot of manual reviewing. Um, then we had to gather all the images from the Scribus text files, like searching the text for those images and getting the references. Um, and, but because now we were working in the realm of plain text, namely Markdown, which this is kind of a new format that we got, um, we could use more um, easy, well, at least for us, easy to use command line tools to process the text, like to tag images, to find um, glitches in the text, to tag footnotes, and so on. Um, another great thing, so now that we had um, all the articles in text format, and after editing them manually, most of them, um, we could add some metadata. You can see on the top uh, of that, uh, you have a title, um, semicolon, and the name, and the author, and the section. Um, and this is markdown metadata. Why is this useful? Um, usually, in, the, in recent years, you, you would consider a kind of CMS for this, uh, for this kind of content. Like, every article would be, uh, you could add, like, a WordPress custom uh, installation for this, but uh, we wanted to try um, the last big thing, which I think will also be a thing here at the LGM uh, going to be talked about, which is uh, static sites generators, 
which you might have heard of. Um, usually, and in our case, we we used um, something called Pelican that gets markdown files and reads the metadata and builds the website on, on from that. So we could add like another metadata type, which was tags, um, that then we could tag articles with. Um, Again, so in our documentation, you're going to find quite a few <coughs> recipes for um, every single operation that we needed to do, like resize images, uh, re-download the images from our repositories, um, turn images into image links. This, this is all uh, in the readme found the repository. So starting from the text files, now we have all the magazine articles in text format, and we can build it. Uh, into a website um, using this uh, wonderful, wonderful Python library, which is called uh, Pelican, to uh, make, actually build the website itself. So this is uh, the repository for the archive, and what we have is uh, a folder per issue, and inside that folder we have all the articles that were in that issue. And we're organizing them by the page number, so it's a much more cleaner structure and easier way to find things in, the, well, in all these eight issues that we published. And this is the site that Pelican generates. So this is the home page. We are now only have the eight issues that we published. We will now have uh, another new issue with the new texts that we are working on. And you can browse the issue, you can browse the archive by issue, by author, or by tag. We are working on these ways to, um, to organize the articles that can be interesting and different from the print object that we had before. This is the issue page. And so what, we, what we're doing is we're using the categories in Pelican uh, to, for the issues, and we're using the tags for the themes. So in each uh, category, you'll see all the <coughs> articles. This is a, a page of one of the articles, and we, we were working on the theme in a way that would make it look like an archi archive, because uh, Pelican is a tool that's built for making blogs. So it's not, uh, you don't have this out of the box. We, we built on top of it so that it would work for what we wanted. So when you are reading an article, you can go back and forward in the articles in that issue. And then on the bottom of the article, you can see all the other articles in the same issue. But you can also see all other articles in the same section. So in this case, dispatch. Then we, we added links to the PDF. If you want, you can uh, click and go directly to the magazine PDF. And you can go to the source markdown file, which we hope it's, has a lot of use. Uh, so in the authors, we, we put together everyone that uh, contributed to the magazine and you can, uh, you can look for the articles by their authors and you can see which sections they are on. Uh, the tags uh, also work a bit the same way. And it will be, it will be published, uh, well, we'll it's already online, but we will announce it maybe next week. Yeah, uh, once I've written the press release, um, <laughs> we'll, we'll announce it. Uh, and also, actually, I'll, I'll just say, because I'm terrible and a bit of a librarian, uh, once we've come up with the right schema for organizing the tags, mm -hmm. then we'll all be much happier. So what? Thank you. Um, yeah, feel free to visit it. There is the source archive in the box, and if you feel um, a bit picky with us and you want to file an issue, please do. Um, if you don't want to, that's fine as well. Uh, all the archives are, are uh, is accessible right now. Here be dragons, but uh, <laughs> um, we thought it would be uh, productive to just put it out already and fix the things. Um, in the meantime, I think we have 
an extra 10 minutes for Q&A. Um, so, yeah. thank you for your time. Does anyone have any cues for us to A? <laughs> is, that, is that a hand? Do we have a, we have a mic, hey? Okay? Does anyone want to? <laughs> Here, I'll give you that. I think you need to turn it on. Put it down when needed. Ah, fair enough, just shout. It's an pass, right? So it's available for other people to, uh, to extract XML from files? Uh, yes. So, okay, for the for the stream. So the question was, uh, um, if if the the tool allows you to, uh, if there is available the tool to extract text from XML, um, the tool is available. If you go into the repository, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I can access Chrome here, but uh, maybe I can uh, I can check. Uh, it is on the on the um, archive repo. Repository, and I'll show you exactly where. Um, the thing is, it's very limited. Um, so um, I might as well tell you. So it's in here scripts and scribus extract. Um, the instructions are inside, um, and they're not super complete, but this will work to take <coughs> text. But it's not, again, it's not bulletproof. We had to review, and we found some, some parts that we did not extract the full. Um, the full content, but it like worked for 95% of it. Mm -hmm. um, but again, yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's a bit buggy. It will give you the the text boxes out of order. You have to reorder them manually. Um, and I suppose that if you're interested in getting stuff out of Scribus, the Scribus yes. developers in the in the LGM will have a much cleaner solution to 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 extract stuff. Um, there's another hand over there. Maybe I can just shout. Yeah, um, I'll repeat the question. There are some uh, there are some XSLT scripts floating around to take Scribus output and convert it to uh, text or HTML or whatever, and that that will likely get things in the right order. So you might want to look at look for those. Okay, so the, 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 the this remark that there's a few XSLT um, files that around that will help you convert that. It's, only natural that only now we hear that there is a much simpler solution. <laughs> of course. Such is a hacker's mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I asked Google for Scribus XSLT and I got like 14 gazillion notes. Okay. Oh, that's what we're going to do, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, uh, searching for Scribus XSLT will lead you the right way, apparently. Uh, my question was a bit breaking. Have you talked about uh, implementing? Scribus importer in Pandoc. Pandoc. Uh, okay. So, uh, so the question was uh, thinking of implementing a Scribus importer in Pandoc. Um, this was really a hack. Um, we're and uh, we're far from uh, we're Scribus users and not developers, and um, so it's really out of our league to implement a plugin for a conversion. This was really something that we did for this. And then we ran away from it as <laughs> fast as we could, and uh, we had our way around it. Um, but again, I, I think there's quite a few. The people to ask about this are in this room, for sure. Um, it's just not us. <laughs> yep, you in the back. So now you extracted the truth from the layout <coughs> into uh, Markdown, and maybe that could also change your, your workflow for the future. So is there a plan how you bring back the markdowns to the scribus or how you link them together? Mm -hmm. I also think there is a problem when you have like layout specific stuff like yeah. try to have hyphenation and stuff like that. Okay, so so the question was uh, how if it would be possible and how could it work to bring markdown back into scribus? Um, again, uh, as, as you remark, we're really just um, not, the, not the most proficient Scribus uh, hackers. We tried back in the day, mm. like uh, a few years ago, but we ran into a few issues back then with the Scribus scripter interface, and we kind of dropped that. Um, not attesting to any kind of 
um, lack of features in script is just that back then we could not manage and we stayed with the manual workflow since we're in this kind of project we're doing a lot of manual work already so it's you kind of do that already so um, instead of going trying to make this markdown to scribbles. Although I, I, re I remember in past LGMs hearing uh, stuff about uh, coming up with this kind of uh, markdown to scribbles workflow. So again, I, yeah. Yeah, actually yeah. I see Ale raising his hand. That's one of the guys you should ask. So uh, uh, if you want, you can talk. If somebody in Gavin's kiosk is interested in that, you can talk to me afterwards. Mm. There are plans. And there is code. Mm. Yes. There we go. Anyone else? Yeah, Brendan. So now you have this nice infrastructure to produce, and in theory you could, you know, <laughs> the, if somebody gave you some good articles, you could actually make another, like a strictly web version. Mm -hmm. Theoretically. <laughs> there's some, there's, I mean, I might do that. Oh no, you're not getting us like that. <laughs> We have not foreclosed on the idea of doing other things at some point in the future. Um, I, I want a book, to be honest. Um, that's, that's what's on my mind. You know, I, I want it to be a book um, because paper, paper is nice. Uh, but this was, you know, this was something that we've been thinking about for eight years. And that's, I think, to me, that's why it exists, mm -hmm. because we've wanted it for so long and it never happened because we were so busy doing all of the other overhead things like, I mean, yes, you hand me a lovely article and I'm delighted, but I am an editor, I still have to edit it, you know, <laughs> unfortunately, um, because people's, uh, people's grammatical mistakes don't fix themselves. Uh, and one of the things that we always tried very hard to do was keep an exceptionally high standard for for everything we did, which I think, for the most part, we achieved. <laughs> There's a blue box with rounded corners that haunts me from, from 2010. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yes, so the answer is theoretically, yes, this gives us a platform to do things. But I don't think, uh, I don't think it means suddenly getting the band back together for mm -hmm. a, an online magazine. Unless. Um. Yeah, I mean, it's not, uh, there's no impossibles here, but uh, the, well, the plan for this was actually really to, um, it's an awful term, but entomb the magazine in a dignified way, much more than just PDFs. Um, I mean, but of course, let's, uh, if there's any determination, of course, let's talk about it. Let's, uh, we really enjoyed doing this, we would enjoy it. Uh, picking up something of the like, so we can think of something <laughs> if anyone wants to come to us and talk about it. <coughs> all right, is that all? Does anyone else have any burning burning questions? Yeah, yeah. My phone's buzzing. Someone does on Twitter. Um, I guess that's it, right? We can say thank you for, for listening to our waffle about magazines. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.